So number one gives us a relationship between um, bacteria, a bacteria population that's in thousands and the time in days since it was measured to be a thousand can be represented by this equation right here. And so a couple of things to keep in mind here is that again, the bacteria population is in thousands and then the time is in days. And so it says select all um, equations that are true about this situation. So this one says each day the bacteria population grows by a factor of two. I personally think it's kind of hard to look at that in logarithmic form. So I'm just going to rewrite this in exponential form. So we'd have two to the D equals the P. So two to the days equals the population. So for every one day, the population grows by a factor of two. This is true. The equation P equals two to the D also defines the relationship between the population in thousands and time in days. Yes, I just rewrote that in exponential form. So exponential logarithmic form um, are equivalent to each other. The population reaches 7,000 after log base two of 7,000 days. So this one, remember that our population is measured in thousands. So we're not gonna plug 7,000 in, it would be plugging in seven. So the population reaches 7,000 after log base two of seven days, not 7,000. The expression log base two of 10 tells us when the population reaches 10,000. Yes, this is your population in thousands. So 10,000. The equation days equals log base two of P represents a logarithmic function. Yes, that's a logarithmic function. The equation seven equals log base two of 128 tells us when the population, okay, when P reaches 128,000, yes, we've got 128 in here, and then remember it's in thousands, in seven days. So this is true. Number two, here's the graph of a logarithmic function. What is the base of the logarithm? And how can you tell? So for this one, I kind of look to see where do I see it actually crossing an exact point. So I know that um, 10,000 goes with an exponent of three. So what to the third power would give me 10,000? 10, 10 to the third, or sorry, would give me 1,000. 10 to the third gives me 1,000. So the base of this logarithm is 10. All right, number three says match each equation with a graph that represents it. So all of these are logarithmic functions. And so when we're thinking about logarithmic functions, we've got these different bases here, right? So the base of number one is a two, the base of number two is a 10, three is a five, and four is an E. So remember the bigger the logarithmic base, the slower the growth rate, okay? Because it's going backwards of the exponential. Um, and so kind of if we look at these growth rates, okay, we've got a two, we've got a five, we've got a 10, and we've got an E. So really the E is like 2.71. So I'm going to put that in between here. So remember um, that these are, if we look at the growth rates, lowest to highest. So now when we look at the logarithms, um, they're going to go the opposite. So log base two is going to grow the most since a base two um, grew the least. So they're opposite order. Um, and so we've got, if I just write these out again, so this ln x and then log base five and then log base 10. So lowest growth rate to highest for exponential. So that means that this is the highest to lowest for um, the logarithms. So that means that this top graph is gonna go with um, log base two of X. So this is gonna be graph A, this is gonna be graph B, C, and D. And so A goes with log base two, B goes with the LN, 
C goes with log base 5, and D goes with log base 10. All right, in number four, it says the graph represents the cost of medical treatment in dollars as a function of time in decades since 1978. We have this expression represents the cost of medical treatment sometime after 1978. Which of these years does it represent? So let's take a look at the kind of ordered pair that they gave us. So they gave us um, zero and 150, and they gave us 0.5 and 202.5. So if we take a look at the growth factor from this interval, so if you do 202.5 divided by 150, you'll see that this has a growth factor of 1.35 on this interval. So for an interval of 0.5 or half of a decade, because remember that our years, our X values are in decades, so half of a decade Every half decade has a growth rate of 1.35. So in this case, then that matches our growth rate here. We've had three of these intervals. This is three times higher or three, um, three, three of these decades since this was just one, 1 1.35 to the first. This is three of those. So then we would multiply half of a decade times three. That would give us 1.5 decades which in years is 15 years. So then we would do 1978 plus 15, and we would get 1993. Number five in equation A of W is represented by this, and it represents the area in square centimeters of a wall covered by mold as a function of W, which is weeks since it was measured. Explain how we can approximate the area of mold in eight weeks by multiplying A of seven, so taking the seven-week number and multiplying it by 1.01. .01. So this is just one week higher. And so if we take a look at 180 times E to the 0 0.01 times W plus one. So now we're just looking at our weeks plus one. And just to show that the factor is 1.01 times bigger, so that if we know the previous week, we can just multiply by 1.01. .01. So if we look at this, um, we can multiply or distribute this 0 0.01 in. So 0 0.01 W plus 0 0.01. So I just distributed this in here. Then we know if we're adding exponents, that means that we multiplied powers of the same base. So I could write it as both of these with a base E. Then we would know that we would add these. And what this allows me to do is say, here's the original equation, right? So here's the original 180E to the 0.01W. And then the next year then would just be this many times bigger, this factor. It's this much bigger than the previous one. And if you type E to the 0 0.01 in your calculator, you get an approximate decimal of 1.01. .01. So an approximate growth factor from the previous week of 1.01. .01. Number six, solve each equation without using a calculator, some solutions will need um, the expression to be used in log notation if you can't um, simplify without a calculator. So in this one, we have two base 10 equations. This is really 10 to the first. So we know that the exponent n minus 3 would equal this exponent of 1. So then we can just add 3 to both sides, and we would get n equals 4. Because 4 minus 3 is 1. 10 to the first is the same as 10 to the first. For part B, we can isolate this 10 to the x by multiplying both sides by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. So 2 times a half is 1. So then we end up with 10 to the x, and 0 0.05 times 2 is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is um, 1 tenth. So if we write it as a fraction, 1 tenth. 
and then one tenth as a power of 10 is 10 to the negative one. So then we know that X equals negative one. Part C, so we have 10 to the one third T and we have equals 100. Well, 100, we can write as a base 10. So 100 is 10 squared. And then that's helpful because then we know that these exponents are equal to each other. So we know that one third times T is equal to two. We can undo the one third by multiplying both sides by three because three times a third is one. So we just get T and two times three is six. Part D, so this one, 48 cannot be written as a base 10. So this one we're gonna need to do logarithms. So if we do log base 10 of 48, that will give us back this exponent of 2x. So then we would just need to divide both sides by two to get x by itself. So x is gonna equal whatever log base 10 of 48 divided by two is. All right, then number seven technology is required for this, um, but the population of Molly can be represented by the function m of t equals 17 times e to the 0.03t and the population of Saudi Arabia can be represented by s of t equals this. In both models, t represents the years since 2014 and the populations are measured in millions. So which country had a higher population in 2014, which is your initial time, right? So your initial time is going to be this or your initial value. So Saudi Arabia had um, a higher population to start with at 31 million versus 17 million. Which country had a higher growth rate and explain how you know. So remember growth rate is this part e to this decimal. So we want to look at what e to the 0 0.03 is versus e to the 0 0.015. And we know that this one's going to be higher because 0 0.03 is higher than 0 0.15. So we know that um, Molly had a higher growth rate because its growth rate is e to the 0 0.03 and that's bigger than e to the 0 0.015. And if you needed to type these into your calculator, you could certainly do that if you wanted to just be safe and make sure that you um, checked those. So e to the 0 0.013 is 1.03 and then e to the 0 0.015 is 1.015. So this one's larger. Then it says use graphing technology to graph both equations on the same axis. So I've done that in a graphing calculator here. So to do that, you just hit Y equals, type in both equations, and then hit graph. So we can see these two um, functions here. So S of T is the red one and M of T is the blue one. And it says, do the graphs intersect? And if so, estimate their point of intersection and explain what this situation means. So yes, they intersect, right? So they're intersecting right here. And so if we kind of estimate that, you can see that that's at about um, x equals 40. So 40, and then if we um, go this way, something like 55, I actually have it on here, it's like 56.5. And so what does this represent? And so what this means is 40 years after 2014. So in the year 2054, both cities will have a population of 56.5 million. So that's when those populations are going to be the same. We know it's 40 years after 2014 and that the population is about 56.5 million.